Hello, my name is Andy. And I am the village idiot, and a mom with a car and a GoPro, and an unhealthy amount of time on my hands. Welcome back to the district of Selby in North Yorkshire. And today I've got a nice little village for you, and one which has a nice little pond right in the middle of it on its village green. Now, everything is centered on this area which means it's going to make my life a little bit difficult to walk around this in a circle but no, no, no matter i'm used to this kind of village i just don't like them <laughs> i'm sure this one though is going to be absolutely fabulous because just look at it it's a nice day some nice properties and just generally speaking it's the kind of village which i think i'm going to enjoy and i think you will too this is skipwith Skipwith is a village and civil parish about four miles northeast of Selby and ten miles southeast of York in the Selby district of North Yorkshire. Until the 1974 local government reorganisation, Skipwith was part of the East Riding of Yorkshire and still retained some links to the county. For example, St Helens Church, which we'll come across shortly, is part of a joint benefice with the churches in Bubwith, Ellerton and Orton, all of which are over the border. The Doomsday Book records that a man named Robert de Stutville held land at Skipwith. His family held a manor here until 1229, when it passed to Hugh Wake by his marriage to Joan de Stutville. Handily, the history and layout of this village is all brilliantly told on this board, on the marvellous village green right in the centre. So on the green you've got the parish notice board on one side of this, and on the other side we've got maps oh you know I, I love to find a map right okay let's see where we are so uh, I began there which is just outside the village hall now this map the light is sort of reflecting off it so I'll just come out a little bit so you can get a, a handle on where we are here I'll just stand there maybe Ooh, no that's not very good okay let's try this one okay so I started here uh, at the village hall and I've walked down to the green this is as far as I've got at the moment and as you can see this village is all centered on this village green there's bits going off in all directions <laughs> I certainly can't walk it in a circle so the plan is to come up Main Street which is this road right here and head up to these areas as far as maybe as the well as far as the church and then I shall come back down here to this part and then this part there's a wood down there somewhere before going back up there so it's kind of circular but I've got to come back to the middle every time it's like a star shape this one so yeah that's a little bit a uh, little bit of information for you about this village let's get to it Shipperwick is the name given to the village in the Doomsday Book. The first part of the name means sheep, which means Skipwith is literally sheep village. This board had a neat little timeline at the bottom which details Skipwith through time. According to this, Little Skipwith, which is a small hamlet to the northwest, was the original settlement, with the land around it being divided into strips. Skipwith has plenty of dikes and streams which drain eastwards into the Derwent. The entire northern boundary is one of those streams, the very same which becomes Dam Dyke in Rickall. Apart from the occasional mention of a weaver in the 18th century, the only non-agricultural occupation in Skipwith was milling. A windmill was recorded in 1536, and it was still a post mill in 1834. It stood on the common. The industrial history of the village also sees us talking about coal once again. As part of the Selby Coalfield mining venture, the coal underneath Skipwith Common to the south was mined from 1997 onwards. Whilst there were some objections to this, RJB Mining said working the Stanley Main Seam was necessary as poor geological conditions in the Barnsley Seam led them to seeking alternatives. The coal seam is 900 feet below the surface and was the subject of test borings in 1909 when the Derwent Valley Light Railway built their line to the east of Skipwith Common. 
Skipwith had a station on that line, the very same line that was mentioned in Thorgenby. Whilst the station still exists as a holiday let, it lies within neighbouring North Duffield's boundaries. The parish boundary is the old railway line. Skipwith and its common lie on the sands of the Breton Sand Formation. The underlying sand is thought to have been deposited during a glacial period, when sediment was left here due to retreating ice and the flow of water over the Vale of York. Skipwith is a village heavily associated with Methodism. Just two families were Methodists in 1764, worshipping in each other's homes. That was until 1833, when a Wesleyan Methodist chapel was built. By the 1860s, it's believed 300 or 400 of the villagers were Methodists. In 1876, the first chapel was replaced with a larger brick one next to the former parish school. There may have been Quakers living in Skipwith by 1734. The village has a Quaker burial ground, which is close to Skipwith Hall, disused by 1840 and sold by 1873. Modern-day Skipwith sees a population density of 25.62 per square kilometre, and according to the 2019 statistics, it's an entirely white British parish. You don't see that very often. Skipwith's average house price comes in at £380,000. The village hall has a backstory to it. This was built in 1714, founded and endowed by Dorothy Wilson. It was originally a school. In 1851, its pupils included 11 boarders. In 1957, the school was closed and its pupils were transferred to Thorgenby. Since 1959, the school has served as the village hall. Dorothy Wilson is remembered via a stone on the wall. Skipwith has a public house, the Drover's Arms, which is now a gastropub. There were three licensed houses at Skipwith in the 1750s. The Hare and Hounds was a former pub here. Buses run through the village, stopping here at this shelter on the village green. The nearest railway stations are at Resel and Selby. Skipwith's parish church is dedicated to St Helen, the oldest parts are Saxon, dating from 960 AD. The West Tower began as a porch, but in the 11th century, upper stages were added to turn it into a tower. The present chancel was built about 1300. It's lofty and has large, square-headed windows with decorated Gothic tracery. The chancel windows were glazed with medieval stained glass, fragments of which still survive. In the 15th century, the tower was raised again, with the addition of a new bell stage above the 11th century Saxon one. In the 16th century, possibly after the English Reformation, a clerestory was added to the nave and new square-headed windows were inserted in the North Isle. In 1877, the church was carefully restored under the direction of John Loughborough Pearson. Notably, the south door was replaced but reusing its original 13th century ironwork. St Helens is now a Grade 1 listed building. So it looks like here in Skipwith, the Book Exchange, is effectively in the church. <laughs> a bit different to your uh, normal red telephone box, isn't it? Those Methodists certainly left their mark. Here's what was originally a primitive Methodist chapel. They would unite with the Wesleyans in 1932, this chapel being extended in 1980. The bus shelter is more than just a waiting area for the local service, it's also a memorial commemorating the coronation of Queen Elizabeth II. Briefly back into the churchyard we have the war memorial which stands at the entrance to the church, and inside the church there's a map which shows us a landmark that's practically opposite. Now I don't think I'm going to be able to get access to this, but from the church, which is here, We've got a moated site, which you could potentially see. If I go back out the door in a moment, we'll have a look, see if we can see it. The moated site was a manor dating from between 1100 and 1200. It stood until 1657 and the remains are clearly visible, even if they are seemingly on private land. Close to the church is Skipwith Hall, an early 18th century house of seven bays and two and a half storeys. Flanked by a three bay wing on each side, this is a magnificent piece of architecture and is a grade two listed building. Apart from the hall, there are a few noteworthy houses like the Vicarage and Red House Farm, which was built in 1908 by Lord Wenlock. The green, with its pond, may have been laid out as a marketplace and fairground at one time. It was reduced in size in 1814 by the enclosure of about four acres of land at the northern end.
And there's another pond, albeit on private land, which is directly opposite Skipwith Hall. You might notice lots of paddocks and stables around this village, like this one. Out to the south of the village lies Skipwith Common, which we'll be going to shortly. In 2004, the site was confirmed as a special area of conservation. The common is publicly accessible, these trees forming the northern edge of it, where a small wood meets the village. There's plenty of wild animals here and these signs tell you so. It's not uncommon to see animals crossing these roads as they move between the forested areas. So all I've really got to do now is walk back to the car from where I started at the Village Hall. But we're not quite done with Skipwith yet because we still need to go and see Skipwith Common, which is down Common Road or Common Lane, whichever it is, that way. So I'm walking back to the green again and Common Lane or Common Road is that one there, the second one on the left. So we're gonna head down there. But before we do that, it's time for today's picture bit. And here it comes right now. So to the car park at Skipwith Common. This is a national nature reserve and one of only three areas within the Vale of York that represent what the area was like before intensive agriculture took over. Natural England have described the reserve as having international importance on account of its wet and dry heathland. The site used to be common land and has seen use in the Bronze Age during the early modern European period when it was harvested for peat. It's a huge site which is generally forested. There are numerous ponds on the site from the flax industry which flourished in the area around the 19th century. Part of the site is labelled as Danes Hill and was thought to have been where the Viking army buried their dead after their defeat at the Battle of Stamford Bridge. During the 20th century it was partly incorporated into an airfield during the Second World War, its southwestern edge being utilised by the RAF as the bomb storage location for the adjacent RAF Rickall airfield. After the Air Force departed in 1957, the site was rarely used and was subject to being overgrown with birch trees. The site was designated as a site of special scientific interest in 1958 because of its rich vegetation. So I'd be here all day if I attempted to walk all the way around Skipwith Common. It's massive. If you look at the map of the parish of Skipwith and you see Skipwith Common to the south and just how big it is, it's much bigger than the village. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I don't have that kind of time. I'm afraid to walk around it all. But I, uh, I, I imagine it's just looking much like this for most of, most of it. Great big place with plenty of nature and just the sounds of the birds in the trees and that kind of thing it's great it's great and it's the, this kind of thing that makes me miss village life so much because where are you going to find somewhere like this somewhere as peaceful and as as tranquil in a city you're not going to are you you're just not out here in the countryside you just expect it amazing I've enjoyed this, I've enjoyed the parish of Skipwith and I hope you have too and I'll be moving on to my next one in Selby. We're starting to get towards the end of the district now and it's incredible to think Selby's 74 parishes are just starting to whittle away. We're over the halfway mark, well over the halfway mark and I'm getting excited because when Selby's finished of course we'll be heading up into York and that's another area I can't wait to start 
This has been the Parish of Skipwith, and I've been Andy, also known as the Village Idiot, and I'm out. Thank you.